Welcome to our review on proteins and mutations. First thing we need to understand then is what we're actually talking about when we refer to a gene mutation. So quite simply, that phrase just means that it's a change to a gene. Now, gene mutations are things that will occur spontaneously throughout an organism's life. But there are three things that will actually cause these changes. First one is just an error that occurs when the DNA is being replicated. Second one is the presence of certain chemicals. And the third one is if we're exposed to ionizing radiation. Now, when we talk about the fact that it's a change to the actual DNA, what we're referring to is a change in the base sequence that makes up the DNA. So if we change those sequence of bases, what we'll find is that we may get a different protein being coded for. So to give you an example of what we're talking about there, what we've got in that first box at the top there is just a typical DNA sequence. Now we've got three different ways that that could be affected. The first one, what we've actually done there, okay, the first bit, A, T, A, G, C, that's the same. And then we've deleted that next C. So basically we've lost the base, which means that everything has shifted along. So if you think back to what we said about when we're making our proteins, each section of three bases, those triplets, code for an amino acid, then as soon as we've deleted that, all of the ones that follow are in a different sequence of three bases each. So that means we're going to be coding for different amino acids and therefore a different protein. The second one in the middle there, all we've done is we've changed that C for a G. So it's just been a straight swap in that case. So unlike our first example, this will only affect one amino acid. So the chance of it having significant changes is much lower. And then finally, on the right hand side there, what we've done is we've added in another base. And again, what we'll see is that everything after that is going to be affected because obviously there's an additional base, which is going to shift that little sequence along a bit. Now, mutations can be quite harmful to an organism. So some of the things that would be harmful mutations then, first one is if the mutation makes the cells keep dividing, so they lose that control of division. And that's basically what cancer is. Second one is that it might stop an enzyme from working because if we change one of the amino acids, we can change the shape of the active site so it no longer works. Third one is something you encountered in your core science, which is sickle cell anemia. So that's where we get slightly different shaped hemoglobin molecules so our body can't transport oxygen as efficiently. And finally, cystic fibrosis, again, something we looked at in core science where we're actually having this mutation changing the protein channel in the linings of the airway. Not all mutations are harmful though. Some of them are actually helpful to us. And the best example of that is skin color. So what we actually found was that the mutation to have pale skin is actually a real big benefit to those of us who live in temperate regions like in England, where we don't get brilliant amounts of sun. Because what we find is that if you've got pale skin, then in these areas where the sunlight is more limited, then we can absorb as much of that as possible to allow our skin to then make the vitamin D, which prevents a condition called rickets. Now, if you had darker skin living in this kind of country, then the opposite would be true. Okay? It wouldn't be very helpful. But the dark skin was the original skin tone. And what we've seen is that we've had this mutation to make the paler skin for those people who live in these more temperate regions. And that's why you get this kind of skin tone in different countries, because it's based around the adaptations that are more beneficial to those particular areas. And just like pale skin is useful in the temperate regions, having darker skin tones is far better if you live in very hot regions where there's very strong sunlight, because that means that you're not going to be so affected by that UV radiation. The darker skin has a natural protection. So people with pale skin go to these very hot countries on holiday and so on. You end up getting quite burnt quite easily. It's just because we don't have that natural skin protection. Finally, we have what's called a neutral mutation. So these are ones that have neither a benefit nor any particular harmful effect. So a couple of examples just to bear in mind, the ability to roll your tongue doesn't give you any great benefit in life. And it certainly isn't it harmful and having attached or free earlobes neither of which is either beneficial nor harmful. They're just neutral. The last thing we really need to remember is that when we have mutations occurring, 
then it actually leads to differences in the genes of those organisms. Now, those differences will lead to different proteins being made, and as time goes on, what we may well see is if they're beneficial, we can end up seeing evolution take place. So it's down to these random mutations that eventually we get this evolution occurring.